So the XL option is five foot longer stick okay, okay. on the truck. And then when you do the tandem tandem configuration, you're moving with the longer boom, you're moving more weight to the front of the wrecker, right? And you're reducing the weight back here. But on a, it's the old configuration of a three axle in the rear, call it tandem with a lift axle. When you put your lift axle down, you're stealing from the weight in the front. So let's say if your target is to keep half the front axle weight on the truck, this is now picking about 24,000 pounds before half the front axle weight comes up versus 16,000 before. So you, by the time you got to 16,000 pounds in the rear before, you lost half your front axle weight on the teeter-totter. So this is giving you about 10,000 pounds more safety factor, I guess, if you want to yeah, call it that. absolutely. This is the longest underlift we've got available on this, correct? That is the coach. That is the coach, that, 165 inches of reach. That's neat. That is actually exclusive to Miller Industries. Really? Outriggers, a uh, very good option to have on the 9055, especially if you're doing side pulls, uh, something that's not straight off the back. It's an option also on the 35 minutes. Hose reels? These hose reels are live air, both sides 50 foot on each one, uh, in addition to your auxiliary air there. That one. It's mounted up underneath the body, but you open that spigot there, wash your hands so you're not all dirty and nasty and gnarly when you jump back in the trunk. Oh, that's neat. Out of the factory like that? Out of the factory. Everything's got a place, hoses, adapters, tools. Any other little bells and whistles on this thing that my truck uh, doesn't have? <laughs> not that I can think of. It's too clean. No, we still haven't got it. <laughs> Interesting. This Vulcan V100 has a auxiliary winch under the boom, so you have three winches on a integrated boom. Pretty interesting. Oh, he's, always, he's always been a great guy, but man, you, that's, you, you grew up. Yeah, I got old. You got old. Nice. Stop in, say hello, whenever you're in there, you Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Appreciate you watching. Yeah. Alright, Hannah. 
hand it over. Yeah, the yeah, reason he's, is he's doing for this. The reason why is uh, it's a humorous looking intro. <laughs> Did what? So <laughs> Stoffers towing with Rocky Mountain Wrecker sales. Rocky Mountain's a good dealer. Post a bunch of stuff on their Facebook. I'm actually a huge fan of the storage solutions that Jerdan has to offer. I believe this is the gold, the gold pla uh, package. But yeah, look at everything's got a spot. Pretty neat. I like that. Here's the next box back. We got the fifth wheel plate, strap storage, and this door comes on out. Right now it's extended. I was just going to say that. I saw that. So yeah. it's going to extend. Fully load grand capacity. Mm -hmm. Overall length. When it's closed, it's 48, so it gives you the California King Pen laws. Also good in residential areas, so it gives you a real tight low turning radiuses. Um, you have the capability of lifting all, all the axles in any configuration you want. Last axles are air lift. Uh, next to the first and second are chain lift. So you can get real short on it. You have two 20,000 pound lunches. So it works right. Uh, front and rear. Hydraulic. Left to either side, so it's a detached nose you can load it. Front or rear. Correct. So from the rear. You can load from you the rear. ramps. Uh, yes. So, Good to have. And you, and you run, you can put Apatom, I mean, we have the kits for it, you can do Apatom, mm -hmm. super expensive. Sure, yeah. Most guys just put Oak, Yeah. you know, a lot cheaper. Nice. a button and it uh, retracts itself. See that? Bad. Hey. See that? Synthetic chain? Uh, I don't know. In my opinion, I feel like synthetic should be synthetic, chain should be chain. Mm -hmm. Pretty light though. Okay. It is light. Maybe safety chain. <laughs> huh? There's Dad. So we're gonna head to the Miller Industries demo and check that out. 
for us. Josh Lovelace, uh, one of our newer members Josh. of the team. Uh, yeah, Josh! Mr. Josh is the man. Pacific Northwest region uh, handles uh, that market for us. Uh, we also have Brent Mortahan. Brent is uh, one of our members of the... Uh, There's the Van Lingen rotator time back in the background. ...resources that are put into these things. We have a rotator school coming up in Chattanooga. We put a simple spring mechanism in here so that if you were to have a failure in the field, you could easily replace that line and just add to the serviceability of that unit without having to get into a big pulley system into a, a major set. So as you see here, this is a fully uh, automated valve run from electrical control in the cab station there. So as he's, as he's operating that unit, uh, he doesn't even have to leave the cab. He can just lay that perfectly level down on the ground. He'll actually, when doing this, he wants to actually lay that crossbar completely on the ground. Yes, it will get scratched, and yes, it is okay. It is engineered and designed for that. And drop that car right into a parallel park uh, position. He also has the ability, and I'll stand in front of it. I'll be the, the moving or the non-moving target here. So say we have another car in this area. You're going to do it, and then I'll stand right behind it. I don't want to cross park But if I'm that car, Here I am, just uh, two feet, New York City, San Francisco tight area. As you see, as he pulls it away, that parallel park car, he's able to easily pull that out of that spot and not affect the car in front of him or behind him to get right to. Uh, how do we set this up? Yeah, are you not even on? We have the four stage relay. Um, the all put it down first. It's a great option. Help me out, brother. My first time. It's okay. So what we're going to get at is we want to set this truck up off those wheels and tires. If we were winching something heavy off the back, the setup is completely different than what you see here. If we were winching a heavy load off the back, first of all, our outboards would be all the way in. Never had enough. I can't tell you how many times we get pictures or we see them uh, on the internet. People have the outriggers fully extended, winching out a heavy load. They're going out to the cavity, coming back to the tailboard. Outriggers in the ground, outriggers fully extended. If you've been in any, any kind of training class, especially with Mr. Luciano, he's going to always talk to you about leverage. Leverage, leverage, leverage. This extendable rear outrigger here is a big lever. As this, as this goes down, it's wanting, to, it's wanting to pull it itself away from that truck. As we go out to the casualty and come back to the tailboard, we haven't neutralized this leg at all. We have this big pry bar out right here. It's just naturally going to go whoop, and it will do it. And it'll go whoop, and then we'll break the collar on the backside, and then you're going to call your distributor, and you're going to call your rep, and you say, this thing broke. I say, well, you had your outriggers extended. No, I never do that. I don't ever do that. But that's what happened. It's okay, but if we're winching, we're going to retract these outriggers all the way in. We're going to go out to the casualty. We're going to come back and we're going to neutralize this leg. That's super important. It doesn't matter if it's a 16 ton, a 7035, a P70, V100, heck of competitor's product. You want to neutralize that leg, not come back to the tip board, because that's going to keep that outrigger or that jack leg, whatever it is, from coming up and folding up underneath that truck. We would also want these retracted. We would want the truck on the ground. If we're winching something to us, we want to create as much friction with as much surface area touching the ground as possible. So we would have it down on the ground. We'd actually probably engage the winches first with the outriggers up, let it sit in, and then put our outriggers in. Because now we're using the brakes, we're using the tires, we're using all of those chassis components that are not just designed just to transport this record around, they're also designed for for, for a specific purpose, we're going to use those components to help help set us down. <clears throat> so that's the, that would be your winching setup. Here, also the like the winching off the back. You don't want to hook to the first stage of that movie. Or the third stage. I'm sorry. Very good point. So what Mike's talking about is you come off the recovery boom and come back to the end of that that uh, tie back point at the end of the recovery boom. It's just wanting to pull the third stage out of the second stage and out of the third stage. We go back, if you were with us down in Florida, uh, we did a demonstration, we did pull off the recovery boom, but what we did in order to neutralize that is we took the other, the other line that we were not using, and we 
took it, ran it back to the main stage, and then extended the boom out so that we could neutralize that boom. So, yeah, very good point. So you don't want to be pulling that second and third stage out. No pulling out. So, in this scenario here, uh, we're not going to be picking and swinging this around. We're doing a little bit of a, a modified in lane roll, so doing it a little different. We can do this. You could also do this with an integrated if you were working off the back. The same, the same principles apply. But we are going to be, we're going to be lifting. So you'll notice that the wheels and tires are off the ground. We've got the truck up on the platform. It's very, very super important. Um, we do this, every one of our rotator schools, we go into the test pit, we put the pull meter on the, uh, on the dead man, and we show you this with the numbers in real life. And I'm telling you, when you get this truck up, up, on its platform, off the wheels and tires, and you've got it sitting there, this truck will perform 25 to 30% better than it will with the wheels and tires on the ground. You heard it here, folks. Couple things that's happening. As we pick that, that truck up and get it off, we're transferring that that moment arm, or where our pivot point is in our lever, all the way out to these rear out, or all the way out to the outriders as far as they can go. The other thing is, as we've lifted that up, we've taken all this weight and placed it over here to counteract what we're lifting on this side. So that's super important. Um, and again, we, we, we can back it up with the numbers every single day. So just remember, if you're picking and swinging, or if you're lifting, you want to get the outriders, get the truck off the ground, wheels and tires off the ground, because it will perform better. <coughs> so a couple things on the setup. <clears throat> so we've taken the, uh, we've taken these two main winches, uh, we've, we've two part of the lines. Uh, this this crash truck weighs about what we about 30, 33, about 33,000 or so. So we're going to be picking up the heavier end of the rotator. Uh, we've taken two part of these lines, we've run our, our half inch chain all the way underneath uh, the garbage, the can. It's going around and all the way to the top side of the frame rail. The easier way to go is on the bottom side of the frame rail. It'd be a lot easier, we can have to use less chain, we have to get a little less dirty. But going to that bottom side frame rail would be simpler. But by wrapping it completely around that box all the way to the top of the frame rail, as we engage that winch, it's going to naturally want to start it, start to roll that one, pull it all the way around. So it's creating on the other side, which you can't see, it's creating downforce on this side to help us to be able to pick that load up as we, as we move it here. On the opposite side, over there, we've done the same thing, just backwards. So that, those, that chain is coming around all the way under and going again to the top side of the frame rail, give us that that maximum amount of uh, exposure, especially with that chain going around all those components, it's touching all those larger surface areas. It's, gonna, it's just a nice little trick that'll help spin that load over, especially if it's you know, not wanting to come. On the front side, so we talked about the extension of, of the, uh, the 3212. We, we've run here as, as a traveling snatch block, kind of in a, in a modified choker situation. So this is a great tool to use. If you're doing this as an inlay or off the side like you see here, you want to pick the front of this truck. Maybe you have a less experienced operator. Maybe you have that guy that you're not, you really don't want to quite have on the controls. He happened to be the closest guy on the scene, but you just need that other truck. You really don't need him to do all that much. All he's got to do is lift weights. All he's got to do is lift weights. So he's simply going to pick up over here. And as we pick on the back side, this operator is just going to engage this winch to pick the front of this up. So you'll see our, our lines coming out from the driver's side, down into a snatch block, back up to the boom, and the snatch block back to the other side, and then terminating on the opposite side. You'll notice that we're using one, we use the cable from the, the driver's side, and that's ending over on the passenger side, so that we're neutralizing that load on the recovery boom. So this operator here, all he's got to do is engage it. He doesn't have to boom up. He doesn't have to boom out. He doesn't have to do any of that. He just has to engage the winch, watch the front of this truck, and just simply keep keep that trash truck off the ground because all the work's going to be done by the 1140 there in the back. All right. They're probably about tired of us. Let me talk. Y'all watch this thing come up. All right. You're going first.
see it shift over? So it wasn't quite centered. We didn't, we didn't quite have that center of gravity figured out exactly where it was. So as he picks the back up, you pick the front up and out, Fraser? Yep. And we only want to pick this as high as we need it to go. There's no use in taking it any higher. If we were to have a regular failure, if it changes brakes, strap brakes, snatch block catches, we don't want this to fall any, any more than it has to. So we're simply going to get it it's, it's all we need to off the ground, and then we're going to start the roll. essentially rolls the front end of the truck in the rigging so it really doesn't require much operator skill like Miller was saying pretty neat see that the shackle chain it's ideal to have the uh, 
chain through the shackle, remember? Three link rule. You can actually see right there. It has one, two, three links. See what I mean? Raptor set up. We didn't get the Raptor set up. Just to see what it's like, huh? Yeah. I've heard mix, mix and lift here. This is a knee boom. So, right. I mean, look at how much more lift it has compared to that. I'm trying to figure out how they have those uh, spreader bars set up up there. This is good. Remember that video that we watched about neutralizing this? A pull off of your legs like this? This is what they were saying about not running a snatch bar back to your tailboard and run down to here. They, a, they put out a good video about this. Yeah, about how this like creates a fulcrum that pushes okay. your legs into the ground. In boom angle, all that, you know, like what you're at a capacity. you away from the truck where it's safe and you go out to everything. Yeah, that's, and then you can yeah. change the speeds. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, lock the winches in. Like I said, you can't release the winches, but I mean, you can lock them in for, for the remote. But, The biggest thing about this show, just meeting people, it's really awesome to speak with the people who make your truck, Miller Industries, just get to know them and be on a whole different level with them. It's pretty awesome. Today's, I like the purple. Beautiful. It's a really nice truck. You guys know whose truck this is? Mr. Van Lingen, Frank Scotto. They have a YouTube channel. Definitely be sure to check them out. I'm a fan of that. All right, guys. Well, that officially concludes day one of the Las Vegas Toe Show. I'm wearing Kalen Seibert sunglasses. They gave me these. That trailer is really cool. Um, you guys have seen that so far if you have gotten this far in the video. That was that extendable uh, bus trailer. That was really cool. Actually, maybe something we were even looking at. Um, but with that being said, um, I just want to touch up on a few things. The Las Vegas Toe Show is so much more than going and looking at the trucks and stuff like that. It is more about talking to people, especially for me, because I have so many contacts through this YouTube channel, I'm so fortunate for that, um, but also through my presence on Facebook and like I said, YouTube, um, to the point where I know so many towers uh, in the industry by over the internet, but I don't know them uh, face to face. So it was really neat and I'm sure I will meet a ton more people tomorrow um, because I was only there for an hour and I met like 15 people um, that I can finally put a face to. So if you are one of those people, I am super excited that I was able to meet you. And uh, some of you guys are even on the vlog. If you guys are watching this, I get there's a few handshakes in this video. Um, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm most looking forward to. The equipment's awesome um, and all, everything like that. And that's, it's really cool, but in my opinion, meeting people in the industry is really cool. So, um, yeah. So, game plan tomorrow. Um, I got the Miller, or not the Miller, the NRC demo is at 11 o'clock, so we're gonna check out the NRC demo, and then after the NRC demo at 12 o'clock, the show opens. I'll have an hour to kill um, looking around the show and whatnot, like we have been doing, and then at one o'clock, I'm at the Guardian Angel booth for 30 minutes to an hour, hang out with Guardian Angel, um, and just talk to people, get to meet people, and uh, really tell people about the product. It's actually a product that I'm fully behind. I wear it every day, and I use it every day, so I am totally willing to spread awareness on that product. I think it's awesome. So, with that being said, we will see you guys tomorrow uh, at 11 o'clock at the NRC demo. So, I will see you then. Alright, good morning. Uh, so, we are about to head to the show. Uh, I'm going to get dressed really quick. Just I am going to wear a uniform shirt today. I figure that's appropriate at a toe show. So, we'll go throw that on. Um, but yeah, game plan today. We're going to hit the NRC um, demo at, it's 1017 right now, so 11 o'clock is NRC. I want to get there a little early and get some uh, B-roll stuff, time-lapse and whatnot. 
So, uh, we'll put a uniform shirt on. I'm just wearing a pair of jeans, not the full getup. But, figure we'll wear a uniform shirt. Stand out a little bit, you know? So, yeah. Um, we will get ready really quick. And today, I am taking a backpack. I'm going to Guardian Angel booth at 1 o'clock. So, I'm going to take a backpack with me and... Uh, I'm also going to take my hard hat with my light on it, and I'll probably just leave it with them until the uh, show ends, and then I'll grab it again. So, let's go ahead and head to the show. We almost forgot our badge. That would not be good. So, we need a badge to get in the show. It just says my name on it, and gets me in. So, let's go. What it is right now, and basically swing it around the back and bring it on the front here, and then we'll be breaking down the whole thing. And using the carrier, we'll be carrying, we'll carry the whole thing away. Uh, so we will need all these people to actually uh, run that day. <coughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about yeah, the Start running. So we're going to use that uh, 50. Like I said, that's the uh, latest generation. What's different on it is pretty much from the previous generation, is pretty much everything between the outrigger and the mast. So we still have the same powerful uh, boo mast and all that, company, uh, all that system is the same that we have for years that has been proven. And we have the same outriggers that we used to have. And we changed everything in between. So basically, all that body itself, uh, the subframe, the structure, has been improved quite a lot on this. Uh, so what we did, the first thing that we wanted to do on this vehicle is actually get more storage space. Because, of course, you carry a lot of equipment when you go on a recovery scene, and you see there's a lot of rigging and a lot of tools there. So we wanted bigger toolboxes, and the issue when you have bigger boxes is that you're adding some weight to your equipment as well. So That's everybody nice. knows that My truck doesn't do that. weight is critical on a rotator, especially on that smaller weight of rotator, which you want to use to tow as well. So all the weight problem, all the weight issues is critical. So we wanted to have bigger toolboxes with bigger access to it, bigger opening, and we wanted to keep the weight a little bit lower. So we had to go composite on the side to make the whole side much lighter than it did with steel. <clears throat> in order to do that, we had to change the whole design in between the whole subframe to make it a lot stronger being smaller than it was. Because we don't have the size anymore as a structure. As a result, we didn't work a lot on the whole structure in the middle, and it turned out that this truck is much stronger and much stiffer than it was before. So with this, with this truck being improved, we have a stronger structure in the middle that can actually carry all the weight and all the load that we're lifting with that uh, boot, and without twisting the body and carry all that load on the outrigger. So we have a few of those uh, CSR 15 on the road right now. It's been released uh, last Baltimore show, so about six months ago. And uh, we have one that has worked all winter, and our neck of the woods was pretty cold. We have a tough winter, and users are very, very satisfied with the, the outcome of the, the whole structure and improvement on it. What we did also is that on these, uh, the 50 ton like that, we changed the old, uh, the, the, the complete hydraulic system, and it shares the system with the heavier, the bigger rotator, the 65. And what it does is that we actually end up having a much smoother system, and it's very, very easy to control a load. And it's critical when you do a lift like this one here to be able to just 
precisely control everything we do. Because if it starts moving around and, and swimming, then it creates all sorts of problems. So the ability to actually control everything precisely and everything can be finely tuned on the touch screen. So we have controls right there. We can access to the menu and do precise adjustment. So about like 30 minutes ago, Kenny was practicing a little bit. It was noticing that it's slowing. So we went into the menu, just go into pre precise adjustment, and then we, we could feather uh, the, the remote control so it gets more precision and less speed, less speed on the remote. So everything can be done right there on the spot using the, the touch screen. And of course you can't see from there, but when you, after the demo, if you want to come down and then talk with us, we can actually show you that remote and that touch screen. <coughs> So like I said, we did improve a lot of the side of the bodies uh, and we did increase the access to tools. Because one of the issues we had before is that we had some storage, but the access hole was a little bit smaller and it was difficult to put everything in and out. In the meantime, we're going to progress a little bit here. So one of the challenges we had this morning lifting that is of course um, the, the size of the vehicle. So 32 about 15 ton uh, for the whole unit. It's not that heavy, but it's big, and it's, it was a little bit far out, and we have to move it around the whole thing. Now, if you notice here, and what we just, what I just said is that when you do something like that, you want to be smooth and precise, and yes, the control helps a lot on that, but the other thing that makes it a lot easier is what is happening right now. So, We've been doing that for four years. I don't have to remind you that every product that we make, uh, heavy, heavy trucks, are sliding good. Uh, it's not, nothing new. We've been doing that for years. Uh, in fact, we've been doing that for more than 25 years using that system. Um, but you can see right now the full advantage of having that sliding system um, for two reasons. You have additional gearings. So we started off the side and it was actually easy to sit there and set the whole um, spreader bar up and get some kind of balance because we could slide the glue right in the right spot with the light glue control. Then we lifted the whole thing and if we would be sliding here, two things would happen. We would maybe lack like right now, okay. One, if you if you if you don't have this ability to slide your back all the way all the way back, then to do that, what we're doing right now, you would have to extend your groove to go around the corner. And as you extend your groove, what's happening is that your whole load is going up. Because you're extending your groove and then your rope length remains the same, so your load is going up while you extend your groove. So you lose capacity, and if you were maxed out on your capacity already, then to go around the corner, you're extending your groove, now reducing your capacity doesn't make a lot of sense. And your load is going up, so you have to also control your uh, your rope plane or your uh, your lights. So as you move out to clear your corner, then your load goes up, you go your winch down, and then you want to keep a certain height, so you move up and down just to keep everything at the right spot. And then you still have to go around and use that slow control, that rotation control. You got to be very skilled, and it's very difficult. You're so focused on your controls that you cannot actually look at the, the big picture and see what's going on. With our remote and the ability to slide, well, you could slide the mask all the way back and just focus on one thing, going around the back and rotate with only one lever that has been finely tuned half an hour ago so it goes to the perfect speed. And everything goes smooth. And I don't even see what, what it can be, is that? And the reason why Kenny's uh, right here is that he can see the whole thing as well. So that's the other thing with the remote, is that he can see far enough from the whole recovery scene that he can see his truck, what's happening, he can see his wire rooms, is complete again. You see clearly, you don't see that, but where we're here, we see that we're here in the back of the truck by about eight foot, so we're not even close to, to be touching our own truck. We have enough clearance with everything. So if whatever happens, we're not going to crash into 
this one is estimated about 17,000 pounds. So we'll be uh, well within the raving for that. So those 40,000 pound carriers, they can be used for equipment hauling. That's why this one has a wood deck as well for track vehicle. Uh, a lot of people will actually uh, turn out to be more popular on the West Coast. You know, we'll also on the uh, East Coast as well for the wood deck for people that carry a lot of equipment. Um, but a lot of people also choose to go with full steel deck. We also offer this wood that uh, this vehicle here was not really uh, designed to work in a corrosive environment, but we do offer the fully galvanized bed. So the deck itself, the whole deck can be hot dip galvanized up to whatever length, like, up to 30 foot long. We can do that uh, hot dip galvanizing. We can also do the galvanized suffering and everything. So really, if you work in a corrosive environment where there is salt water in the wintertime and it's very difficult, it seems that I've never, never seen that we have done before.
transport. You can store it like this, you can carry it like that, you can break it down so you can take down the handle. This one is uh, $12.99, we do trade through special $9.99, this one over here would be $19.99, we do $17.99. For four years warranty brushes, and we do, where you out of? What's the difference? They work the same. 31 inch battery power, and there will be 38 inch push power, gear driven. This ramp obviously has to fold over. Yeah. That's pretty neat. That's smart. Appreciate it. I might get in trouble with that hat. That's all right. Appreciate it. Chris, Rocky Mountain, talk to him. Like a Freightliner M2 or something like that. Okay. And then four battery uh, tractors for that. So that'll do it, no problem. Yep. And how many times would you say? I mean, you're generally looking at about 30 per charge. You know, but the, the manufacturer actually says, I mean, it's not the same old battery technology. They actually tell you to keep it plugged in when you're not using it, you know, which is part So you can do that? You can yes, on the, yeah, they prefer that you do that on this. You know nice. what I mean? This is for towing, like, let's say you get stuck in the mud. Okay. You're, like, off-roading or something like that. Sure. You need to get pulled out of the sand. That's what these guys are for. Okay. Same thing with, like, big rigs. Like, if a uh, big rig, you need to pull, like, a big rig, these are the kind of recovery straps that you'd want. What are we rated at there? That's 125,000 pounds. Yeah, Working mode in it or breaking strength? I'm just curious. Breaking, breaking okay. strength. Yeah. And are those, I, I know some of the ropes you can like tug on them. Are they, is that how they're designed to, you, you tug slack them. on them and then you yank them? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. This one stretches 30%. 30%. Okay, cool. So this synthetic uh, rope. Synthetic gotcha. nylon. Neat. Cool. Appreciate it. Anyway. Fully waterproof. I'm looking for a bag. That's neat. How long has that been in here? Have some out. This has been in here since the show started. We had it in here all so day yesterday. Pleasure. More than 24 hours now. Yeah, for sure. That's impressive. Dip it right down here. All of our devices have an IP68 rating, which means they've been depth tested up to one meter for an hour. With no water penetration on the battery or the board. This could go about 30 to 40. Show me. Have you seen these lights before? Yes, of course. You see those big boxes in the video. Have you touched them? There's your light. Heavy. Small thing. Yeah, it's, I, but the nice thing is you don't even feel it on your helmet. The way I like to use it, if I'm on the side of the road in the daytime, I hit the GA button, it goes crazy. I call it crazy mode. <laughs> but that's how I, I like to do it because it goes crazy like that. But if I'm at night, I use it in this mode. So I go wig wags in the back and... Oh, this one doesn't do it. Like that. So I can actually see what I'm doing. Drop a drive shaft, something like that. Yeah. I can see what I'm doing. Traffic knows I'm here. How much is that? That's, that's the man to talk to there. What? No, I saw it. <laughs> My stress ball. Just stress ball. Come on in here, Dad. Are you camera shy or no? Well, you know what? It's, it's, it's the one that started the. Do you want to come on here too? Uh, it's just me. 
you do, Tim? Oh, no. <laughs> it's <laughs> no way more advanced than we are. Have you, have you, have you met the owner of, no. of Zip? No. Is it here? Anyone want to buy a flatbed? So today I'm going to be demonstrating our absorbent product, our patented absorbent product, Spill Tackle. Uh, we're here at the Las Vegas American Towman Exposition today. So this product is 100% sustainable, made from uh, completely recycled raw materials. Um, it's four to six times more absorbent than your standard run-of-the-mill cat litter. Um, it's extremely effective in absorbing automotive fluids off the side of the highway um, in your typical you know, responses. So it's great for towing operators. They can take a lot less of a product and uh, get, the, get the spill up a lot faster. As you can see here, what it'll do, It'll encapsulate those fluids so that they won't be released back under the environment and it'll get you off the side of the highway a lot faster. Nice. Looks like it works pretty well. Yep. Spill time. Still, yeah. All right, everybody. That is a wrap of day two, the my final day of the Vegas Toe Show. The Vegas Toe Show was pretty cool. Um, not necessarily new products and stuff like that where all, um, all the companies are coming out with new trucks per se, but more so meeting the people. I think that's, for me at least, that was the best thing is to be able to put faces to people that I know over Facebook, be able to shake hands with my subscribers. That was the most like humbling thing ever. I had kids, and you saw it on the vlog, come up to me and say that they, I'm inspiring to them, that they watch my videos, what can they do to uh, run their parents' company in the future, stuff like that. It, it was very humbling. So, awesome experience. Um, huge shout out to all the companies out there. Um, Miller Industries was out there. They walked me through their products. Uh, Jerdan. NRC, NRC had a really good demo, by the way. It was on the day two vlog. Um, and I think NRC had a really good demo. Um, Guardian Angel hooked it up with another light. Uh, they gave me a blue and red. Now, the vehicle code in California states that you cannot have any color other than amber on your um, vehicle itself, but then it kind of gets blurry where you have lights off of the vehicle. So this is going to be used strictly off of the vehicle. I'm going to mount this to uh, using the cone mount on uh, that Guardian Angel has to offer and put it uh, behind the casualty when I'm by myself. Anytime I'm on scene with law enforcement, I will be using the amber light. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm pretty excited to use it. It is super bright. Actually, I'd say brighter than the amber light. So that's really cool. Really awesome. So yeah, um, huge shout outs to uh, Zips. I met with uh, Renee and the owner of Zips. That was awesome. Uh, very nice meeting all of you guys. Rocky Mountain Wrecker, Chris, nice meeting you. Um, who else? I'm missing so many. I met so many people. It was very awesome to, like I said, put faces to everyone. Um, so with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the vlog. Um, at this point, I don't know how I'm going to edit it, but hopefully you guys enjoy the way that I do edit it. Um, I'm going to come up with it. I don't know if I'm going to do a whole series, or like a multiple part deal, or I'm going to keep it all one video. So we'll see. But nonetheless, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about it in the comments, and we will see you on the next one. See you later, guys. Stay safe.